a lot of questions that I get will revolve around how an individual can feel less out of breath with firefighter duties. So the general kind of feedback I'll hear is, hey Jess, I, I can run for 30 minutes on a treadmill, but then when I'm open up in a door or performing firefighter duties, I feel out of breath. So the first question I always ask with that is, do you make yourself feel like you do performing firefighter duties or trying to open a door on a weekly basis when you work out? And generally the answer is no. And so if you don't make yourself feel like that and perform some type of exercise, it doesn't have to be every day, like one to three times per week where you feel out of breath and then maybe you're able to recover. You feel out of breath, able to recover and make yourself feel like that, you're not gonna get better at that. So a steady pace on a treadmill is very different than an activity where you're mo moving more of your body in, and uh, getting out of breath. And so you need to make yourself feel like that when you're exercising. And it really revolves too around how to improve your VO2 max. That's another one that I get requested or questions on a lot is like with the NFPA physical, how does someone improve their VO2 max? So there's lots of ways to do that, but the main like primary way that's recommended is some form of interval or HIT training, which is high intensity interval training. And so that's what we're gonna talk about of like what you can do to make, you know, uh, create those types of workouts. So like I said, one to maybe three times a week, you can pick even just one movement to do. So if you have the air bike, this is a really good option is just do intervals on the air bike or on the rower, or you could even do running intervals, uh, burpees, slam ball, really any type of movement, even just squats where you're moving and then you rest. So anybody new to interval training that maybe hasn't pushed themselves like this before and is more used to like steady long-term, especially when cardio training, I always recommend starting out easy. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to necessarily go max effort. You just really want to feel out of breath during that time of work and then give yourself time to rest. Over time, as you feel uh, better performing these types of intervals, then you know maybe you could push it a little bit harder, try to get more calories or more distance, for example, on something like the air bike or a rower. So try in the beginning when you're new to interval training to do a whatever work amount you do, double for the rest. So if you do a one minute work, the ratio would be a two minute rest. So it's a one to two. As you, and then for how long, maybe do three to four of them. You don't necessarily have to do 30 minutes. You could do 10 minutes of that type of interval or 15 or 20 minutes. But the big goal is to get out of breath, feel recovered, repeat. As you do them more, like maybe after a month or so, maybe start incorporating where you equal the amount of work to the amount of rest. So maybe you go more to a one minute work, one minute rest, or a 30 second work, 30 second rest. There's tons of different variations. For one minute, you know, you, there's a certain amount of pace that you'll be able to maintain for one minute. So even if you were going a little bit harder, you may not be able to maintain that pace for a minute. So for 30 seconds, you'd be a little bit more likely to maybe go a little bit harder, but then your rest is a little bit shorter. So it just kind of, you can play with both. And uh, I always like to record, especially if I'm doing like calories or distance, like I like to record how many calories on the air bike or on the rower, or I'll record how many reps did I do of a squat or a burpee or any type of movement. And I'll just record each time for kind of like a grand total if I do five rounds of it. And then the next time I try that same workout, I try to improve by one rep or one calorie uh, and just try to keep even my amount of calories per 30 seconds where I'm working also consistent. Because normally what happens is you'll be really good maybe in the beginning and as you get tired, you know, you start getting less calories and, and the idea is over time, hopefully you can keep the same pace. And if you're able to keep the same pace, the same work capacity and feel less out of breath, that's an indication that you're improving and that your VO2 max is improving. So the next one, if you were to push it kind of to the next level, would be to work a little bit more than you're allowing yourself to rest. So an example here would be one minute of work and 30 second rest. So you cut the rest in half. Another very common one is 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. So those that might know about that, it's known as Tabata. And Tabata intervals, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. You normally do eight rounds of those, so it's four minutes. But you could do five rounds, you know, or, you know, five rounds of them, or you could do, you know, 
10 minutes worth of rounds of Tabatas, but the idea is you keep it a short duration, four minutes. I encourage picking one exercise to do for that amount of time, because the idea is you stick with that exercise. So basically you're taxing, you know, like the same muscles, or like if you're on the air bike, it's more taxing versus mixing it up with like a different exercise. So those are some options. Uh, Again, I always want to warn when you're on shift, be careful of the, any kind of the max exertion work, especially on the air bike. And that's what we'll be talking about in our tips and tricks. Because the it's like if you've ever done a lot of burpees or anything like that, I, I really warn people that you can make yourself like not feel super well. Um, the perceived exertion can catch up to you later. So just ease into it, um, give your body time, and, and record how you do and try to get improvement over time. Okay, so... That's it for today. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and go into our tips and tricks and how to's on the air bike with Kurt. And let me know any feedback on the air bikes. I'd love to hear it and have a great May and we'll see you in June. Bye-bye. Hi, Port on Fire and Rescue. I'm Jessica Cohen, your wellness coordinator. And I have Kurt Summer here with me today, your peer fitness trainer. And we are at station one. We're gonna be going over how to use and how to not use and how to prevent getting yourself injured on the Rogue Fitness air bike. So a big reason that we uh, ordered these, a huge request or um, advice that I'm uh, seeked out for is how to improve, improve VO2 max or the uh, feedback I'll hear is like from someone from a firefighter saying they can run easy on a treadmill for 30 minutes but then they go and try to open a door and they're out of breath. Uh, so what I always ask is to the individual, do you make yourself feel like you do when opening the door or on air, you know, going upstairs? Do you make yourself feel like that when you're exercising? And generally the answer is no. People are more inclined to go on a piece of a cardio equipment for a long period of time, which is good for your cardio fitness and for your heart health. But you want to get that circuit, interval, hit, whatever you want to call it, type training in, even just one time per week. But one to three is a good goal. So a big kind of warning I want to give for the bike initially is that the perceived exertion on the bike is very different from a spin bike. This will be at a set resistance. A spin bike you can make lighter or heavier. You're not going to be able to change the resistance on the bike. And you're going to be working your legs and your arms at the same time. So you want to compare to a bike, an air bike workout, to doing uh, intervals with uh, maybe sprinting or burpees, slam ball, wall ball, those types of exercises, and you're going to get out of breath. So you might feel okay the first couple of minutes on this, and then your, your heart rate is going to start climbing, and it's going to get rougher longer through. So make sure to balance uh, how hard you're going in the beginning and ease into it so that you don't end up regretting it later. So how to set up the seat. So I'm gonna have Kurt go ahead and uh, just jump on there here. What we're looking for with the seat level is with your uh, leg fully straight, but not hyperextended is what we're looking for. But the first thing is to make sure your foot is flat. So you wanna imagine on the bike that you're digging into the sand and you want the middle of your foot to be placed on the pedal. So the tendency is for people to push their foot back and the toe, and then they bring the heel up and they do this tiptoe, kind of a little bit more of like what you might do on a spin bike type technique, which is very quad dominant. You want to imagine like the air bike is like you're walking upstairs. You're going straight down versus like forward. You want to be seated. You have that foot flat again and then full extension down. Slight little bend in the knees we're looking for. So we figured out for Kurt a good height forward of uh, the seat going up and down. And just keep in mind there's numbers here, so maybe just you know make a mental note of where you normally uh, put the bike. And then on the other side here, there are numbers for the seat being forward and back. So if the seat is too much forward, and I'll have Kurt go ahead and sit back up. If it's too much forward, what it'll do is it's going to put your knee tracking too much forward over the toe. Again, that becomes very, quad dominant, it puts a lot of weight on the knees, especially if you're doing the poor form of the tiptoe form. That's why we want the foot with the uh, in the middle. And you wanna imagine like with the seat placement, if I was to take a string and place it on Kurt's knee, it would hang and just hang directly over his laces. You'll see here, you know, lots of buttons, things like that. I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to use the interval side of the monitor. 
Go to YouTube, literally YouTube in, you know, how to use the Rogue Echo Air Bike, and there's tons of information on how to use this uh, specific intervals. All we're gonna go over is if you've used it and you've moved the arms or the wheel, it will turn on and you can see here we've got a t some time and calories. And what people will do to get it to reset back to zero is go crazy. Just like Kurt's going there, go, going crazy. And we say stop. <laughs> All you need to do is hit stop there, Kurt and wait and be patient and breathe. It'll go all black with all the numbers and then you reset. So now we're gonna talk about a few errors and what not to do on the Rogue air bike. Tip number one, use control while using the air bike. Try not to rock your head and rock side to side and get really aggressive with your movement. You could tweak your neck, you could tweak your shoulder, you could tweak your back. You also might notice the bike rocking back and forth. The bikes are sturdy, they're designed to not move. So try not to make it move. Instead, think of your normal weightlifting, good posture control. Chest up, pull the arms just like you would for a bent over row. Keep your midline as tight as possible. You may twist a little bit side to side, but really watch the rocking and aggressively jarring side to side. Tip number two, only one person per bike. Tip number three, make sure you're pedaling forward and facing forward. Tip number four, how to safely get on and off the bike. So a good tip with this, you wanna be careful because when you step down to get on the bike, even if I'm gonna go this side, this handle is gonna come in towards me. So it's gonna like stop you or run into you. So what I like to do is make sure the handlebars are not moving. I step up to the middle first, sit to the bike and then feet on. So Kurt, go ahead and demo that for us. And he's ready to go. To get off the bike, make sure to kick your feet up, stop the handles, and be careful when you step off because those pedals and handles could be moving. So make sure they're stopped and then step off safely. Tip number five, be careful challenging yourself too much on the bike if you've never used the air bike before. Workouts on the air bike can be deceptive and if you perform beyond your ability, you might get called out and be unable to perform your firefighter duties. So if you have any questions or feedback on the air bikes, I would love to hear back from you. And always know you can email me at jessica.cohen at portlandoregon.gov. See you later.